Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this video about Data Structures, we are going to be doing an in-depth look at arrays. So, arrays are the foundation of data structures, both in Game Maker Studio and in data structures in general. If you go and take a computer science course, if you look up data structures, a lot of times the underlying architecture is actually going to be an array that is used in a lot of different ways, but underlying it, it's going to be an array. It's going to be iterating over that array, doing some kind of algorithm on it. That data structure is, at the heart of it, an array. Now, why are arrays so important? Well, it's because they're so versatile and because they are so essential once you get beyond the basic programming. So I don't want to do a lot of talking. I want to actually do some coding inside of here. So let's code a menu. And let's first try and do it without using an array to see just how difficult that would be. And then let's do it with an array to show you just how easy it is with one. So I have an object here. And let's go ahead and make a create event. Let's boost up this code. And let's try to figure out, let's just have a simple menu here that we're going to try and draw. So some variables inside of here. So let's say menu item one equals uh, new game. Menu item two equals load game. Menu item three equals credits. Okay, so that gives us three menu items. We're going to try and just display all three of those. Now, if we go into the draw event, inside of here, we can draw the menu. So we're going to need to do draw text, and now we need to tell it exactly where it's going to go. So let's open up our room, and let's put our object in there first, make sure that that works. And then let's see, uh, what is it, 500, let's say 500 by 150. That's a, that's a good spot for that to go. So let's say 500 and 150 for the first one, and that'll be menu item one. Now let's copy this over and do that a couple times. We're gonna change this to menu item two and menu item three. Now we need to change where this is being drawn just on the Y coordinate. So let's put this at, put it at 200 and 250. Okay, now let's run that and see how that looks. Okay, it's there. That actually doesn't look too bad. That wasn't too hard. Okay, now let's do it with an array. So I'm gonna say menu, and the way that you make an array inside of Game Maker Studio in almost every single language, it's actually pretty much the same thing, is by using brackets. And then you put the number where you want that bracket to be. So an array is a variable just like we've just like we have here. Same kind of idea. But now we are going to access individual data inside of this variable based on a number. So let's go new game. Menu 1 be the same of load game. And menu 2 will equal credits. Okay. Now, for visual sake, let me put a comment here and say if we were to call menu item 1, then it would display load game, right? That's exactly how you would call this. So inside of um, draw text, you would actually put uh, 500, 150, and then menu item 1. And that will be equivalent to what we have inside the draw event right here. The way you access an array is just through these square brackets, and arrays can hold a ton of information. Now, the max size that arrays can be inside of Game Maker Studio are actually 32,000 entries. And that sounds like a lot, but when you start making a very large game, it's really not that big. Uh, you might not ever reach that with a game, but if you were to start doing any sort of data handling like for a business, 
uh, your arrays would be very large. Um, I'm working with a 10 million entry sized array right now, having to sort through that and do data processing on that array. So they can be extremely large overall. But for Game Maker Studio, you have a size of 32,000 by 32,000 if you do a two dimensional array. Now we've got this set up, and so far this took a, the same amount of time. Nothing really changed here. Now let's go into here though. So let's uh, comment this out. And we're going to do a for loop. For loops are the essential part of arrays. Using loops and arrays are like peanut butter and jelly. They go hand in hand because most of the array functionality comes because of a for loop. So if you don't know how to use loops and that is intimidating to you, then you might steer clear of arrays saying that you can just do that without it. But I highly encourage you, look at the syntax of loops and get it down. It's not too difficult after a couple of examples, and if you have questions, feel free to ask. But the loops allow for things that you just cannot do without arrays, which we're going to get to. But they also make things that you could do with arrays, uh, like getting around that, so much easier. So this for loop is going to start at zero with the variable i. We're going to say while i is less than array length one dimension. So this is going to be a function that gets the length of an array. And I'm going to pass it in the variable menu. So it's going to start counting at zero, one, two. So it's actually going to pass back the number three inside of here. So we want it to be while it's less than three. While it's less than three, we're going to draw text. So we're only going to have these. Uh, we don't even need this. We just need two lines of text to do this right now. So we're going to draw text at 500. Same thing. We're going to put 150, but then we're going to do something like this. We're going to multiply that y value. Uh, we're actually going to increase that plus by i times 50. And then menu of i. So the way this for loop works, it's actually fairly simple. So let's go through it. i starts at 0. It's just a variable that we make for this loop, and then after the loop is gone, it's done. So down here, if I wanted to assign i equal to 10, and then use i somewhere down here, that would be perfectly fine, because i is only being changed right there. Anywhere else doesn't matter. Now, we're saying while i is less than this function returns, and it's returning 3. So while it's less than 3, draw text at 500, 150, plus i times 50. Now the first time we do this, i is 0. So this is going to be 500 and 150, just like up here. And it's going to draw menu item i, which again is 0, which is new game. But then it's going to come and look at this, and this is plus plus i is the same as i plus equals 1, uh, i equals 1 plus i. However you want to put that in there, it's going to increase i by this amount, and you can change that amount as well, which is very useful in for loops. But for what we're doing, we're making i go up by 1. And then it's going to redo this whole thing if this is still true. And so when i is equal to 1, then this is going to be a value of 200. And this is going to draw the, the menu of 1. So when i is 1, this is 200 because i time, 1 times 50 would be 50, so on and so forth. Press F5. We run that. We get the exact same thing. Now, if you're not familiar with for loops, this might seem like a lot more work. But... What if you had a lot more items? What if this wasn't just a load screen where you have three items? What if this was an inventory where you had 50 items? Do you want to go through and create menu slots for 50 different items and have to tell it where to draw? This right here doesn't care how many items are in this array. We can come in here and say menu 3 equals awesome, spelled incorrectly. Menu 4 equals cool. Menu 5 equals dude. 
we run that, they're all going to be there. It doesn't matter how many items are in this array because the way we've coded it, it just says while i is less than the length of the array, keep doing this function, keep drawing text just like that. So we can draw as many as we want. If you want to add more inside of here, you've got to come in and hard code that value every single time. So that's going to get tedious. That's going to become nearly impossible if you want to open up uh, a uh, some kind of graphical interface that displays a bunch of text like a player's stats or their uh, an enemy's stats or if you're in like an inventory you're showing all the items that a shopkeeper has if that shopkeeper has 50 items then that means every single shopkeeper you need to have 50 unique variables for instead of one that you then fill in like this and the beautiful thing about arrays is that you could also have something like this be, well, anything that you could then just choose from randomly. That's something you can't do with this. And that example would be, imagine all of these are phrases that a character can choose from to say when a conversation starts. So maybe he's saying something, uh, let's just go ahead and make that. So let's say conversation zero equals hello and let's copy this a couple of times and let's say one two three greetings go away I'm actually dead okay so imagine this is a conversation starter that a NPC can pick from you have one array that is one variable. So now what you can do is use a random function to choose one of these values and then assign it. So if we take off this for loop part, so now what we want to do is actually draw text and we're going to pick just a random conversation starter. So we're going to say 500, 200, and the string is going to be from conversation, so it's going to be something inside of here. Now, how do we get just a random number? Well, we say I random. And with I random, you put in a number and it just says you can't go higher than this number. And if we put in three, it's gonna go from zero to three. So if we run that, we'll now see it's going through all of those very quickly, but it's actually choosing randomly all of these inside of here. If we actually come down to options, and if I put this to one game frame per second, I wonder how that would look. Pretty slow, but you can see now it's randomly going through. So if you had a conversation list like we're doing here, if you had a list of items that a monster could drop, you can now make a master list and just say, pick one of those items and throw it in there for the player to get. Well, what if you wanted that to be dynamically changing. So inside of here, we've got four options. But what if I want to add another one? So conversation four is give me food. Well, inside of here, that wouldn't work because now you have to change this to a four. You have to keep doing that. But if we were to add array length 1D so that we are always getting the max value of that array, then that would always work. Now you have to be careful here, you have to subtract one, and that's because this array length starts by counting the actual number that there are, because there, there are five indices in this conversation array. But the computer starts at zero, so you gotta make sure you subtract one from that right there. And put the parenthesis after that one, put it in the right spot, and then you have a randomly chosen introduction for every conversation and you can add to that and subtract to that because it doesn't matter how many entries are in there it'll always just choose one of them and go with it and that's something that you really can't do with variables like this it's just not possible it becomes completely unfeasible when you have large numbers and that's one dimensional arrays in a nutshell 
Hopefully that makes sense. Those examples work for you. The source code will be available if you want to play with that. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I'm going to continue the next video on arrays, but we're going to dive into two-dimensional arrays. Not grids yet, that's what grids are basically, but a two-dimensional array that you can initialize yourself and it becomes a little more complicated, but it also gives you a lot more power, which is awesome. So we're going to dive into that in the next video, and that's what I've got for you now. So thanks for watching. As always, have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.